First place was a bombed out city. It looked like New York or some big city. And uh, there was fires and screaming. And I never felt dead. You don't feel dead over there. It's You're still you. Your spirit is you. Um, and so I was just confused and, and running for my life. And um, the scenes would change. I'd get to a situation usually where I had to make a decision. The demons were always encouraging me to despair. They would say, you're never getting out of here. Welcome to the crossroads of the known and the unknown. This is AJ Paz, Spiritual Journalist Podcast. Okay, we are here with Kathy McDaniel. Hello, Kathy. Hi, how you doing, AJ? Yeah, we want to talk a little bit about uh, distressing NDEs. You had an NDE in which you experienced L. Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, 25 years ago, I had... Uh, been very ill and I was put into a coma and the doctor gave me some sort of white amnesia and said that we have to do this to try and save you and you will not be able to remember a thing while you're in the coma. Uh, your brain will be offline. So when I awoke in the com in the from the in the coma and found myself in the void and then I found myself in a very hellish, place and I never felt dead. I was just always me. And I went through this really awful, um, long experience. And then at the end, um, I was blasted into heaven and oh my gosh, you know, the whole, then you get the whole thing with the rainbows and puppies and stuff. That was awesome. But they, um, my friend who I had been taking care of had died a month before me and he was there. And uh, he he told me I had to go back. I had too much left to do. And I went kicking and screaming. I did not want to go back. But uh, I, I, I focused on, I've got too much left to do. So I have to find out what that is so I can go home. My first experience was in the void. It got, instead of black, it was like, spooky, foggy, smelly, hot. And then this voice just came out and said, do you know where you are? And I thought, and I thought, I, I hope I'm wrong. And I just said, hell? And it just went, Bwah, with one of those horrible voices. And I went running into the darkness. Uh, the first place was a bombed out city. It looked like New York or some big city. And uh, there was fires and screaming and people running and and uh, spaceship. You know, it was like, you know, you, you just boom, you're in a situation like that. And um, I had to try and find a place safe. I never felt dead. You don't feel dead over there. It's you're still you. Your spirit is you. Um and so I was just confused and, and running for my life. And um, the scenes would change. I'd get to a situation usually where I had to make a decision. The demons were always encouraging me to despair. They would say, you're never getting out of here. You just might as well roll with the program. But I was a fighter and I thought, no, 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 there's something wrong about this. I, I, I don't belong here. So I kept fighting. And yeah, there was demons that wanted to give me these horrible jobs to do that I felt were, you know, working an abortion clinic and I, all these things that I uh, were okay with me. And so I'd say no. And then they'd, uh, you know, say, all right, just gets worse from here. Lights go out, lights come up and I'm back in another situation. And that went on for a very long time. And eventually I got to the last situation, which I didn't know was going to be the last. And again, I was being a brat and the, and the, the demon lady, I, I ticked her off and I was going to, you know, I knew I was going to probably be transferred to someplace else. Awful. But that time, you know, it was just like, whoosh, I, I, I was infused with love and, and, and bliss and joy and, uh, this beautiful warm white light and and I saw my you know my deceased friend and he sent me back and uh I woke up at the hospital and totally confused as to what happened and what it meant but it wasn't a dream the doctor said I couldn't remember anything it wouldn't go away uh I, I mean it's still there you know so that that happens in your soul not in your brain
When I first got well, I uh, I found found a, a group or uh, that had ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is what I got. Well, you know, that's what got me in the hospital. It's lung failure, and uh, I found about six or seven of us, and we got together a couple of times. And at first, we were talking about uh, recovering. You know, the trauma being on a trach you know, for so long and, and getting your health back and all those things. And finally, one time, I think it was our second or third meeting, I said, you know, I got to ask this, did anybody else have something weird happen on the other side? And it got really quiet. And uh, this one young man was there with his wife and she's elbowing him saying, say something, say something. And uh, I, I thought, oh, great. I says, what? Ha-? I said, this is what happened to me. And it was horrible and it was hell and all this other stuff. And he he got agitated and he got up and he starts walking around. And he said that that he would was in a, in a submarine and it had uh, been bombed and uh, it was on fire and they were under the water and everybody was screaming and the, and the flames were getting closer and he was scratching, trying to get out of it. And he was a mess. You know, I mean, his wife was all upset. She says he doesn't sleep. He wakes up screaming and, and um, you know, I don't know what to do. And, and, um, and so the guy, I says, well, I, I had that too, but I, I got out, you know, and he says, well, uh, he says, I can't take it anymore. I'd kill myself, but I'm afraid I'll go back there. He says, I don't know what to do. And he'd stalked out of the room. His wife said, I'm sorry. And we didn't see him again. So I don't know what happened to him, but that was something that, that struck me that, oh God, we got to do something. There's, if this, there's two of us, there's more. And, uh, Yeah. It's bad. So it took quite a long time before I, I got a hold of Howard Storm, Storm's book. And um, even Embraced by the Light, she was had demons come back with her. And then there was Nancy Evans Bush. And thank God, I consider her the patron saint of distressing near-death experiencers. She's got her latest book, Reckoning, is fabulous. But I, I read her books like twice because she, she kind of had a... Uh, she processed hers. Uh, um, she's more intellectual than I am, and some of it was lost on me, but but she got me through. And um, so when I finally got the guts to tell my story at my Seattle meeting, uh, Greg, one of the people that ran it, kept bugging me about it. So I thought, well, I'll just go up and embarrass myself in front of these hundred people. And But they were fascinated. And, and they were with me on this journey as I told it. And when it was over, they I had applause. Yay, we got out of, got out of hell, you know. So I, I was encouraged. And then a couple of meetings later, later, there was somebody there with a, a DNDE. And, and they brought him over and say, hey, this is the lady you need to talk to. And that's what's, what started my ministry, if you want to call it that. So over the years, uh, I, I ran into Daniel, uh, Andy, and uh, he listened. And we decided to start our sharing group. And that was, well, I think, two two years ago. But um, it's, it's been wonderful. And what happens is people come, usually, they kind of sneak in. Sometimes they won't even show their picture. And they'll listen, you know. And then the next meeting or the next meeting, they'll say, I've never told my story to anybody, but I feel safe here. And they'll tell it. There's a particular person I met at one of the conferences that was uh, freaked out. And uh, it was, you know, fate, karma, whatever. We met when I first got there in the elevator. And I could tell this, this, you know, I asked him if he was going to the uh, to the conference because I, I kind of felt he was. And he was very reticent to say much. And I felt this energy. And I said, uh, oh, you had an NDE. And he just said, uh-huh. And I said, was it, was it one with puppies and angels and rainbows? And he says, oh, no. And I said, you had a really bad one, huh? And he says, yeah. I said, great. And he said, huh? And I said, we're looking for more people with these, you know, negative ones. I'm so, yeah, stick with me, you know? And we became fast friends. And that um, that person had a really, really, really long one. He, he told it to he told it to me over this series of four days and uh, complicated and frightening and scary and all that. And I just encouraged him to go, go write that out, you know, go write it out. That That's helpful. And uh, it kind of takes some of the sting out of it.
The distressing ones are awful, but they're very peculiar to that person's experience, it seems to me. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, David Girelli, uh, did a, a massive study of that. He's, he's written a book called How to Escape from Hell, and he lists all kinds of folks that he had talked to, and they're all distressing. And it's so interesting uh, to read that and how, how similar and dissimilar they are. But it, it's always terrorizing and it's always difficult. I mean, if you don't find ions or someplace like that, it's really bad. And um, I'm just so grateful that we have this program now. I mean, people are coming out of the woodwork. They need to talk because these things statistically are, you know, someplace from 8 to 12% of the people have these. That's that's not too many. But um it's enough because I bet you more will be coming out of the woodwork. Uh, the more the programs are available to help them and, and uh, assist them. That's why I'm really passionate about what we're doing. And thank you for bringing this to uh, people's attention. Yeah. A lot of people suffer from PTSD and um, <sighs> are, are you, did you suffer yeah, or my... are you still suffering? Oh, you always suffer. Um, my, you know, finally, eight years later, I went to my therapist and finally had the guts to tell her about it. She was one of the first people that ever listened, actually. And she just was thoughtful. And she says, well, Kathy, I'm sorry, I've got to put PTSD on your chart. And I really don't know how to help you. Yeah, I think uh, the problem is that not too many therapists are aware of, of, yeah. of these symptoms. And they do not accept uh, near-death experiences as something real. There is no like a special training for for this. That's what I was talking to uh, with uh, Raymond O'Brien. He, he lives in London, uh -huh. but he says that hardly anyone is specialized in helping people with, with uh, these negative experiences. And I think that you are helping others with your group Maybe not you personally, but the whole group by yeah. sharing their experiences. Mm -hmm. um, although it's not a therapy, but it is helpful, it is. right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's interesting. A, a statistic I'll just throw out there, but I've I've done over a hundred and thirty podcasts and uh, tallying up just the views. Uh, over two million people have seen. You know this, so. I feel that that's been helpful. Um, I find, AJ, that when I'm talking about this, I, 85, of, I, I guess at least 85% of the people I talk to that have had distressing ones are Catholics. And I think that's because we were told about this purgatory nonsense. And, you know, that's deep in our, in our psyches. We expect to go there. Um, I think, you know, this is just me thinking that if a person is meant to stay on the other side, I don't think they'll experience that. But I think if they go and come back, um, that's what I've kind of uh, figured out. And, and we're just share that, you know, it, um, it it's just, it's difficult for me because I don't like to stomp on people's religions, you know, especially my own. But, you know, we can't love something we fear. And so when religion teaches us to fear God and his judgment, he's going to send you to hell for this or that or the other thing. It, it really hinders our ability to to love God with our whole hearts like we're supposed to. So, um I'm not sure what the answer is. I'm just seeing, and I'm hoping for some change. If we educate people, if we, uh, I, I bless you for having this, you know, for having your podcast and for addressing this issue again. I think it's very important. How can people contact you if they have had a, one of these experiences and they want to share it or get some help? Okay, I've got a website at www and the name of my book, Misfit in Hell, 
to heavenexpat.com. There's a place in there where you can leave me a message and uh, I'd be happy to talk to you or you can uh, you know, join IONS and come to the sharing group. It's a, a wonderful, open, uh, private, secret place where you can listen. And then if you choose, you've got uh, a family already to, that has been through what you've been through and would welcome you with open arms. When are these meetings? They're on the second Thursday of the month uh, from 5 to 6.30 Pacific time. And if you go on IONS and go under events, you will find distressing uh, near-death uh, sharing groups. So this is completely free and anyone can go there or do they have yeah. to join IONS? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think they have to join IONS. No, I don't but, think so either. But yeah, and it's free once you get in. It's a little tricky. I've had people say I tried to get in and I couldn't. So I wish they'd uh, make that a little less complicated. Okay, so well, yeah, where can they find your book? Oh, it's sold on Amazon. I've got Kindle, paperback, a CD, whatever you need. Um, and on Barnes & Noble and any place that they sell books. Well, thank you, Kathy. I congratulate you because you're doing a great job. And I, I'm thank sure you. that you've helped a lot of people and that you will continue helping more people. It's my job. <laughs> then I get to go home. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Stairway to Heaven, 25 near-death experiences about our encounters with God, Jesus, and Paradise. Journalistic research on real cases by A.J. Parr. On sale now on Amazon. There was quite a, a bunch of activity that they were doing during this time. And so, you know, I, I know they were working on me really hard, but the whole time that I was gone, I went to heaven. So as far as, as what I was experiencing, it was wonderful, you know, and I, I was able to, to see God and to see Jesus. I turned and I said to this one leader character who had come and collected me, I said, who are you? What's your, who are you exactly? Uh, you're not the same as these because he was not the same as the other angels. And he seemed to be the one that was emanating this, this incredible love more than anyone else. And he just looked at me and said, I am the one you call Lord. Now for me, there's only one person in all of history that I call Lord and that's Jesus. And you know, this was Jesus that I was sitting in front of. And that really did overwhelm me at that point. I remember feeling all this light, insane light all around me. And I would just like when you're in a deep state of meditation, yes. when you go so deep that you don't you don't see what's around you, you just become one with the light. So yes. that's what happened to me. I became one with the light. At that point, I was turned upward. My spirit was and I was aiming towards the sky and I saw a beautiful, bright white but it isn't a white that we can describe. So it's the brightest light you could imagine here on Earth, but without being blinding. I cannot die right now. You take me back, I have a lot to do right now. I said, I know, you make a promise to me and you need to fulfill your promise. So welcome to heaven. From today, you're part of me and part of all of them. From today, you start walking with me and walking with all of them. Love is the most powerful force in the universe and that's where I'm gonna unite the whole humanity again. And then he said, okay, he put my, his hands around me and said, let's do a life review. I just really became fascinated with the light and became just the joy and the love of God and just the peace of God just began to wash over me. And I just began to look at my arms and, you know, it's not a light like you just turn on. I mean, this light had like particles. It was just like moving and just covering my arms and my body. When I was uh, enveloped with that bliss and joy, it was, it, at first it was all just a bright warm light. And then it started to like settle down and, and take form. And it felt like I was in a cathedral maybe with the, with the marble walls and high ceiling or something, but it was still kind of misty looking. And uh, I, I know that I had looked over to the right and I saw a good size like an architect's table with a great big huge book like a huge bible or something open about halfway and i remember somebody telling me what was in that book and i believe it was my life and i was only halfway through 
Stairway to Heaven, 25 near-death experiences about our encounters with God, Jesus, and Paradise. Journalistic research on real cases by A.J. Parr. On sale now on Amazon, Stairway to Heaven. This has been the A.J. Parr Spiritual Journalist Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe.